Hey friends, we're on our way to the Mobile Museum. So it's all about Mardi Gras. Because Mardi Gras is so big and it's really started here in Mobile, Alabama. And we are gonna come to, to see this. So you'll see all the costumes and some of the decors will be present at this museum. All the, the owners um, of this costumes, uh, they loaned it to the museum. So they spent a lot thousands of dollars just to build those museum, those costumes because they they use um, real stones and um, crystals so anyway guys we're gonna update you later see ya okay guys we're almost at the carnival museum so it's just a minute from now We're here guys at the Carnival Museum. Okay, that's the place. So they have more on Mardi Gras decors here. So let's see. Okay, we're gonna eat now. We paid eight dollars for each of us. And since we got there past three already and they closed four o'clock, so they went ahead and let us watch immediately a short film about Mardi Gras history and how it started in Mobile. When they were through, they happened to come by a hardware store and they saw all these rakes and hoes and shovels and so they each picked up a cowbell and rakes and shovels and hoes and proceeded on their merry way through the downtown area of Mobile, which was all there was then. And they had such a good time that um, they decided to do it again next year. So they did it next year, year after that, year after that. And uh, they said, well, we need a name. What are we going to call ourselves? So the obvious thing was the Calvarians, the Reagan Society. Now, the Calvarians had so much fun as they celebrated from year to year that they uh, became very tight in their organization and they stopped taking in new members. Not even their sons who were young strikers in the cotton business of many, most of them. So after 10 years of this, the young men uh, got enough of it and they said, hey, let's get together and form our own organization. So they all got together and decided, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, let's just call it the Stryker Society. And another one chimed in and says, I think we ought to call it the Strikers Independent Society. And let them know that, that we haven't got anything to do with those cow Thank you. So. Pretty we're Mardi Gras. We're going to talk a little bit about the history and about today's Mardi Gras. Then we're going to go up to the room and talk about the royal courts. And then I'm going to send you on the way. Okay. So the first thing you need to know is that everything started here, like I said, in there to you. And it's all because of Louis XIV, the son of France, who was the richest, powerful king ever in Europe. He built Versailles, the biggest palace on earth. Mm -hmm. He set Montreal in the late 1600s. Well, and so what happened was England started selling the colonies and in 1860, I mean, in eight, sorry, 1698, Pensacola was founded by the Spanish. He about blew up. I mean, he was the most powerful king. He thought everything belonged to him. So he sent Ibobel and Bienville, two men, leaders of French Canada, down around Florida with troops and settlers up into Mobile Bay to settle Mobile to keep the Spanish from moving from Pensacola any further westward, which he did. And 16 years later, the same men settled in New Orleans and went up the Mississippi River and down from Canada and claimed the whole middle of the United States for King Louis and it remained in his power and control, except for the New England colonies in Pensacola, that part of Florida, was in his control until Thomas Jefferson finally bought it as Louisiana Purchase for $15 million. So he did exactly what he set out to do. And it was frozen solid on Mardi Gras Day in Montreal 
because it's always the day before Lent begins, which starts with Ash Wednesday and goes for 40 days and seven Sundays before Easter. That almost always puts it in February sometime. It was below zero. So they didn't do Mardi Gras there. But in Mobile, voila, it was warm. Mm -hmm. So they said, we're going to do Mardi Gras like we did it in France. We had the first Mardi Gras here on the Western Hemisphere in 1703. And the next year, the first Mystic Society was formed. Or crew, they're often called. These are grown up fraternities and sororities for adults 21 and older. They act exactly like sororities and fraternities in college. There is nothing different. They're, they exist to be social groups mm -hmm. and they exist to have parties and get togethers. And their biggest party is the Mardi Gras Ball. As close to Mardi Gras Day as they can get it. Okay. And over time, these there were more and more. It wasn't until 1830 that one of these mystic societies named the Calbellians came up with the idea to build floods to be in their processions that preceded their balls through the streets of the city. Before they didn't have floats, they had music and bands and flags and stuff. But a man named Michael Kraft came up with that idea. And 28 years later, Comus in New Orleans invited these guys over there, mm -hmm. the Calbellians, to show them how to do it. So their parade, float parade started 28 years after ours did. We also have the oldest mystic society left from 1842. Their meeting house is next to our parking lot up there built in 1840. And we have the oldest two Mardi Gras parades in the Western Hemisphere, the Order of Mists and the Mystics. Now, we, today we have 77 mystic societies in Mobile. They have membership from 50 to 600, and today it's all kind of people, from rich to middle class to men, women, white, black, totally integrated, gay, straight, you name it, there's something for everybody. And they all have these giant Mardi Gras balls and they invite a thousand to six thousand people. And last year, 180,000 people went to our Mardi Gras balls in white tie tails and gowns to the floor with choir dress. And you have to be invited. You cannot buy tickets online. You have to know somebody in one of these organizations. Yeah. And so today, 11% of our population works for Mardi Gras. It is, believe it or not, Mobile's biggest billion dollar industry. It's bigger than our shipping industry. And our port is the ninth largest in the, in the country. And it's bigger than anything else. Lumber, uh, seafood industry, it's a billion dollar industry that over one out of every 10 people in Mobile work for Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. If I cancel it this year, it will be an economic disaster for the city, as you can imagine, not yeah. receiving a billion dollars. In a town of 190,000 people, boy, that's a lot of money. Oh, yeah. You. So anyway, as time has gone on, uh, these mystic societies sort of run Mardi Gras. And they're, they're what Mardi Gras is all about. And now we have 37 parades, because all the parades are preceding balls, because all Mardi Gras parades are going to balls. But we have 37 parades that precede 37 of the 77 balls. And these parades consist of about 20 floats. And they go on for 19 days, sometimes one a day, sometimes five a day, sometimes all day long toward the end. And these parades consist of these beautiful floats that are all built in the theme they've chosen for that year. And that's 77 different things. Two years ago, they picked this theme. And here's the, here's the float designer's design of what they carry through with. It takes a huge amount of people to build 900 of these floats. Wow, well, 900, wow. And you can see how beautiful they are. Yeah. Now, it costs a few hundred dollars for him to be a member of this organization. And he'll pay more to be on this float, and he'll pay to buy his costume, and he'll pay $2,000 for stuff to throw. And some of these men are in more than one parading organizations, and their wives too. They're not limited to one. This is the phone tour. You hook up to that number and it will tell you what to do. And you see there's numbers all over. See that seven? It'll tell you what you're looking at. You want to fast forward for a lot of it. But, but I, we're gonna, I'm going to tell you some of it up here, okay? And I want you to sign in as you leave on your way out, if you don't mind. And I'll tell you a few things up here. In the world, the book on Mardi Gras is available in the gift shop. I was featured on CNN last year with my book at Mardi Gras Mobile. And so that's just a little side hobby I do, but actually I'm an architect. Mm. 
So these are worth over a million dollars. These are the drawings of the praise in the late 1800s by the original float designers in the 1800s, and they're drawn on the back of newspaper when newspapers printed on one side only on very thick paper. If you turn them over, you see the news of the day, you see where the paper boys folded them to throw on the yards. The only other place that owns these is the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Mm. Well, that's why they're worth so much money. Wow. You're not scared somebody will steal it? <laughs> Just try. Just try. <laughs> uh, how dare you. <laughs> these still have original color, which is totally amazing to me. Wow. And then more beautiful, we're going to talk about the Royal Courts, which is the other thing we have not talked about yet. And we'll do this in here and then you can come back in here and take pictures. Sure. But up here we have a bigger room and more stuff to see. Okay. Hmm. I like the dresses. It's pretty. Wow, that's pretty. This is... Okay, let me start with it. Mobile, we have two royal court associations. Forget about everything else we talked about. These consist of 175 of our oldest elite wealthy white families and 175 of our oldest elite wealthy black families. So okay. they're still separate. Ah. Uh. And these families have what's like a big family reunion every year with Mardi Gras with all these families. And it's never changed. And these families every year pick their children in college age to be kings and queens and ladies and knights of the royal courts of Mardi Gras. And they pay for their children and everything they're doing here and spend a fortune on it. Wow. There are 25 families at the top of each, okay, sitting up here where the kings and queens come from and 170, 150 families under that where the ladies and knights come from because there can be up to 40 ladies and knights with a, just a king, one king and queen. The ladies are coming out now on the stage at the coronation. This is the coronation building. The coronations take place both black and white and they go to each other's coronation and bow their knees to each other to show racial unity that they like it the way it is, to keep it the way it is. That's the coronation floor. The knights are up there. The ladies are coming out with their trains like this. There's over 90 of these made new every year for all the ladies and the kings and queens of the court. It takes six to eight months to make each one, six to eight people working on them. There's over a thousand beaters and seamstresses working under six Royal Court designers who do nothing all year but make this for the Royal stuff for the Royal Court families. These can cost as little as a new Lexus SUV or a BMW or as much as a oh small diamond <laughs> because everything is real. Most all the crystals are Sworsky crystals or other Austrian birthstones and crystals. Wow. The fur is all real. It has to be antique because of PETA, the animal rights group, but this is all Herman here. All the pearls are real. If you see pearls, and so that's why they're so elaborate and so expensive. And that's a third of what they spend on their children because they also have 30 formal parties that go on for six days before Mardi Gras day. Five parties a day from 10 in the morning to two o'clock the next morning. These girls want a new dress and hat for every single party. Hmm. So there comes the queen. These little boys are in these families too. They'll grow up to be in all this because there's also a teenage court of 14 to 16 years old. Emily here and her family, she, the thing is, she married three of those richest men and outlived all of them and inherited all their fortunes. She's like the cougar of all time. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's Emily wow. Staple, Sheriff in Antwerp, here in Ben Antwerp City. Wow. And so she's related to almost everybody in here. But anyway, <laughs> these are pictures of the Royal Court. And then this is a new exhibit of the uh, courtier, the ladies' dresses that they wear over a hundred years to those 30 formal parties. And it starts in the 20s. And I like the dresses. Pretty. And it goes all the way to today. And so you might want to look at these and the history of all this is on the wall if you have time to read it. And then there's a mezzanine level. We have some beautiful trains behind glass. And then the top floor is as big as this first floor. So y'all got a lot to see. Uh -huh. So have at it, okay? Okay. And if you have any questions at the end, I should be down there. Thank you. Sure. So pretty dress, guys. Look at that. I like this. And by the way, in this house pretty, it's one of the 8,400 listings on the National Register in Mobile, and these chandeliers were all made in Philadelphia in 1871, the year before the house was built by two Jewish, uh, Jewish couple. 
who had a booth and shoe store downtown and said they made so much money selling boots and shoes to the Yankees occupying the city in Los Angeles. I mean, I haven't been to Las Vegas since I was little, so I need to see that. Because I haven't been to the Venetian. Oh, well, no, see, I haven't. See, oh. I'm 68 years old. I like the red one, that one's cool. Oh, look at that, baby. Like the horse. Oh, baby, would you like to go? Where? Baby, the, the party that has this for Mardi Gras, we can, we can pay to go. Oh, yeah, we can. That's you always tell me I want to That's go to cool. a fancy. Yeah, yeah diggy, 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 diggy. We're going upstairs. Wow. Look at that. This this stops here is like very expensive because it's real um you know crystals, real stones they use. That one's cool. The house doesn't look so big. <laughs> I had one of these. I gave it to um, one of the salesmen at work. Oh. I had it ever since I was a kid, and I didn't know it. And, you know, I never. And I showed. I said, "What would it cost to get it prepared?" He said, "To be honest." I said, "I was wanting to know if it was worth getting prepared." Baby, you want to wear this? Probably not. <laughs> oh wow! Look at that um, swan. Pretty. This was actually King Felix the Sirens. <laughs> really? Right there. David Morgan, Molester King Phillips, the third, 1992. Wow. I'm guessing, I don't know if that means he's the king of that or actually the king. <laughs> it's like a rose? What is that? Oh, the sword? It's pretty. I like the Tinker Bell. Like the fairy. I know you would. Oh, I like that red, baby. Look, the red dress. Oh, wow. Really? I like that red dress. It's like you want. It's like you went to funeral. <laughs> Huh? Hi friends, it's just going to be a quick review for our Carnival Museum Mardi Gras tour. Um, because I forgot last time to to say something after our tour. You know, we were so hungry and we went immediately to eat. But um, we both love it, me and my husband. And to be honest like you know like my husband he said that he won't think that he would appreciate it or like it um me i went there just for curiosity i haven't been to a mardi gras event so i'm just curious because i know i can see it in tv that you know this colorful costume and parades so and it's so big in new orleans and also you know but so when i went when we went there it was you know, it's pretty cool, especially if you know really the history about it and, and why is it like that and how these people put effort to just um, do this event and how many people was um, was working for Mardi Gras. So uh, especially in Mobile, it's like it take it per year because of Mardi Gras, it gives them billion of uh, a billion of dollars in the state 
in, in I mean in the city of Mobile. So it was it, it really hurt them a lot, especially in COVID right now, that because of the Mardi Gras was cancelled. So, you know, they lost money. But it's really, really, really amazing when you go there, especially the tour tourist guide was they're so nice and um very um friendly and very welcome and they will tell you and explain to you in and everything so we we really um recommend you to go there once when you're in mobile um that's one of top top five you know um tourist spots in mobile in if you visit if you go to google so that's why now i know why it's in top five but yeah you know it's it's recommended that you you need to go and visit the place for sure you will have fun you will be amazed in how they made these costumes and how important it is to them to the point that they spent thousands of dollars just to make that long cape with all the rhinestones with all the swarovski stones um crystals so this family rich family will that that belongs to um to to the dynasty we call they call it dynasty of of this mardi gras put much effort money you know for it but anyway guys thank you for listening don't forget to subscribe um to my youtube channel and and you know if you have questions just message thank you so much for watching have a great day.